all right what is up everyone welcome back to the channel and i'm back at you today with another video and this one is going to be one of my favorite videos and that is a waiver wire ads 25 of them that could be helpful for streaming for week 15. so if you're in a competitive league you probably know that the waiver wire uh, list can be just so barren sometimes and scarce and it's hard picking up some decent players so hopefully I can give you at least one or two good names out of this 25 list that'll be the difference between uh you winning or losing this week and at least get you thinking give you some different perspectives right because at the end of the day um as, as long as you've got as many perspectives you can make um better decisions so before i get into the list of the players i just want to mention the top right of the screen i've got a list of um, the team schedules for this week the second screenshot is a list of back-to-backs and which days they're on and the third is a list of three and four nights and in green in particular it's highlighted where the teams are playing three and four nights and two of the three Three nights is going to be the light days which is Tuesday and Thursday so this can be super critical uh, in terms of considering when you're picking your fantasy players as well so as we go through the list um, let's see if we can pick out some names for you so Xavier Tillman he is a per stock minute beast and even though he's been injury prone and doesn't get minutes sometimes and does get minutes other times and doesn't really score or get rebounds but only gets stocks He's crazy uh, if you need stocks. So Memphis likes big man and uh, I think that he's still worth picking up if you need stocks as I said earlier. Marvin Bagley the third, he's been really good even with Gaffer playing. It just sucks that his free throws are getting horrible, but um, well, not getting horrible. I guess he's never been a, a high volume. He seems to become a high volume free throw shooter since he's uh, entered Wizards. Anyway, he's good for maybe 12, 14 points, six, seven rebounds. He was on my list last week and he's still on this week because I'm not sure if he's been picked up due to that free throw, um, that free throw inconsistency. Uh, just remember as well, Gafford is in some trade rumors. So we'll see what happens uh, with Gafford. I think they really like him in, in, um, in uh, Washington and they're also looking for um, for a lot of trade picks as well so they might just trade Gafford trade everyone that can has any value in Gafford Kuzma are probably the main two that they're willing to do that for Jabari Walker from Portland he's been awesome seven or eight rebounds a game with that small four position uh, if he gets 30 minutes um, we'll see if that's an anomaly it's it's he's now starting to get some consistent time so we'll see if we can keep it up it's only been about two weeks since he started this sort of rampage rebounding Cody Martin two plus stocks a game plus Rogier was traded I think he's worth it if you need stocks and maybe he's uh, he could give you a little bit more but it's probably just going to give you the stocks mainly and maybe three rebounds three assists sort of thing but definitely worth uh, keep an eye on if you're punting points and you need stocks Iodo Sunmu now with Lavina and Patrick Williams has been in and out um, well he actually actually he's he's been in but he finally had a game art uh, but he's been struggling with ankle injuries so Ayo Dasunmu um, could be good if uh, Williams misses some times but Levine is also going to miss another week as well so definitely someone to keep on your radar if you want a little bit of guard help. Pat Williams has been really good without Levine this year he's averaging 14 points four boards with uh, one rebound one uh, sorry not one rebound one steal one block per game nearly so that's pretty good without Levine and I think that uh, if he he averages also like one and a half three so if Levine continues to be out he's already he'll be out all of week 15 I believe um, Pat Williams could be useful if he plays because he was also out on the last day of week 14. Josh Hart man Josh Hart he could be a beast it all depends on whether Randall is going to be injured for a long time he dislocated his shoulder on Saturday um, so we'll see what happens with that but without Josh Hart sorry without Randall in 2020 last season 2023 he averaged nine points, eight boards, four assists with the steal. So that is at least closer to the numbers that he was that you were sort of expecting from him this year. Um, but he had a beast game yesterday. Uh, without, I think he had like 12 boards or something, 15 boards maybe. Uh, without uh, Randall, so he could be the main guy that's going to get a lot more playmaking usage, uh, sorry, ball handling usage, and also um, rebounding ability as well with his extra minutes. He could be starting to get 30 minutes a game. Pressure to Chua also as a back off power forward center without Randall uh, being out if Randall's out for a long period of time. You may be good for maybe six, seven points, six, seven rebounds a game with a steal, with a block. Who knows? He gives you a little bit of random stuff. So we'll see what happens. They do have, they're one of the teams that have the good schedule with the two light days and the three and four nights. So definitely worth it and pick up if you need some rebounds and the steal if Randall misses time. Continue on the list, Luke Kennard, um, he's probably gone, but you know, he's still good. He just misses every second, third game, but when he plays, he seems to get like 15 points, four rebounds, five assists, three threes, four threes, and a steal. So pretty good, in my opinion, but well, it just sucks that he's uh, inconsistency in terms of game played. Uh, David Roddy, uh, he was on my list last week. Uh, I was uh, d debating to keep it on, but you know, still good for maybe 10, 12 points, three, four, well, four, five rebounds maybe, and, and, and threes as well. So if you need scoring, maybe worth it, but again, it'll be very inconsistent. Jordan Hawkins, Decent stream for points and threes, about 2.5 per game, even with all that depth in uh, in the New Orleans roster. And he's, um, again, inconsistent, but on average, that's what he'll give you over time. Santi Aldama, he's been really good as playing the center position. He's one of the best shot blockers at that position so far in the in this season. He doesn't play that many minutes there, uh, but he may get a lot 
lot more with um, the resting and injuries in Memphis as well. So definitely someone to keep an eye on. Just remember, he gives you threes as well. We've got five rebounds again. So you're looking at 12 points, five rebounds, a block. That's pretty good. And a three as well. That's pretty good from um, a power forward center type player. Wendell Carter Jr., man, I was wrong about that. I thought that Goga had taken his spot. <laughs> He's come back from injury and completely retaken his spot again. Goga's not even getting any minutes. So I don't know whether they're trading. I reckon they're definitely trying to trade Wendell Carter. But anyway, until that happens, um, you, you've got to pick him up if he's still available because he was available until last week in my league. Um, I think everyone had just given up on him and then, you know, obviously he's had a beast uh, return. So everyone's, the, the person who picked him up is hanging on to him now. Brandon Miller, he had four good games and one horrible game, um, but he gets minutes and usage now with Rosier Trader. So he's good for points and threes, about 14 points a game two threes a game so definitely worth a pick up you should get a lot of monster usage going forward um in the post all-star break as well Ursa thompson he was getting minutes in low 20s and he was good for maybe seven eight rebounds in stocks at the position but he hasn't been that great even though he's still getting those minutes so i don't know what's going on but um with burks alec burks and boyan bogdanovich potentially the trade rumors you know they could be clearing up you know back to 30 minutes for him so it's definitely someone to monitor or at least grab if you are doing well and want to stash someone Malcolm Brogdon, Sharp was out. He's also, I think he's coming back this week. We'll see. Uh, but when he plays, he's been pretty decent so far without uh, without Sharp. And also Scoot doesn't seem to be getting many minutes over the last two games again. So we'll see what happens when he gets minutes. We know what Brogdon can do. And again, trade stashable if he gets traded. Dennis Smith Jr. He's been pretty good, actually. He's he, I think he closed out some of the games against the Clippers. He played a lot more. Um, so he gets, you know, maybe f sort of seven, eight points, uh, four rebounds, four assists, and a steal. Like, it's pretty good in a three. Like, especially in a 14 league, that's, that's that's pretty helpful as your end of roster player as well so um, just monitor him and worth it picking him up if you need again that assist steal and guard position to be filled Gary Trent Jr he's good for threes points and steals if IQ continues to miss time he's only missed two games I think but um, yeah could be worth hanging on to again he's stash stash worthy I think that if he does get traded he's gonna his his situation is definitely going to improve worse what he currently has in Toronto Chris Dunn he's similar to, to Dennis Smith Jr um, you know looking at like sort of six seven points four five rebounds four five assists and a steal but he's been more efficient in my opinion and he's only locking down maybe about 15 and 20 minutes a game but you know he's we, we know what a per minute beast he can be as well so definitely someone to hold on to as long as he's at least getting those minutes because before he was some some games would be 20 minutes some games would be six games six minutes it's god it was so hard to to roster him jared vanderbilt he's been crazy for steals he's averaging like two or two and a half or something over the last week or two uh, but yeah he's until he loses that form and he's getting minutes now i think he's good for sort of seven points five rebounds and one and a half steals a game which is pretty good for that power forward position if he's still available on your league lakers have a great roster this week as well sorry great schedule this week so another reason to pick him up jalen smith obi toppin they're not, they haven't been that great. Jalen Smith's probably been better than Obi Toppin in terms of consistency, um, but obviously Pascal has taken away their um, their dominance, or not dominance, but you know any value they have. But again, they've got good schedules this week as well, um, so it could be worth holding on to one or both if you just want someone at those positions desperately. Luke Cornett, also another one with a great schedule, and Kevin, uh, not Kevin Porter, um, Porzingis, he's been uh, out with that ankle injury two games now. It could be longer, but it's hard to say. Luke Cornett could get some extra minutes as well, because, you know, Horford is who he backs up as well, and he's also, you know, rests on back-to-backs and gets injured as well um, a little bit here and there. So Cornett could be someone that you're worth picking up for uh, rebounds and blocks and some great field goal percentage. John Concha, man, he's been awesome, not just for rebounds, but stocks, man crazy some of the stacks he's putting up so he had a five block game a couple days ago so anyway he's definitely someone to watch especially if you at that small forward guard position that's rare to get those sort of uh stats in that position so definitely someone to roster if you need those stats especially rebounds that's what he's consistent at. i think the stocks are unsustainable to be honest Dario Saric, 10-5 uh, with 1-3, even with Dray Draymond. He was doing it before when Draymond was out. He's doing it with Draymond. He's just been rock um, solid in that particular position and stats all year as well. So someone to pick up. Um, just remember, well, week 17, Golden State has a six-game week due to the games that they missed uh, from the death of the assistant coach. So, um, yeah, definitely someone to pick up uh, if, and hold if you need someone in the position. Andrew Nemhart, uh, Tyrese, he's probably coming back this week, they say. It's pretty weird that they rushed him or well, i don't know if they rushed him back but weird that he played two games and then was out for three that's pretty strange but anyway he's even with Tyrese, he's still good for sort of seven points four five assists and a steal he just has not so great field goal and also his turnovers are pretty high as well so just bear that in mind Eamon thompson he's become really good even at the backup he's getting about 15 minutes a game now 15 18 minutes a game he's been good for seven points sort of like four five 
five assists, um, oh, sorry, five rebounds and three assists. That's right, I'm reading that wrong. And his steals, his steals are awesome, even for those small minutes. So uh, check out his, check out him for if you want stocks. I think he's, he's great. Um, and he also plays that small court, small, uh, sorry, shooting guard, small forward position, which again is he's not so easy to get uh, stocks, especially that like blocks as well, which he gets. And Paul Reed, he had a monster game against Denver, and I think in the back to back this week, uh, uh, Embiid is going to sit out again. So definitely someone to uh, to have in your mind as well, or even pick up prematurely because it's likely that Embiid might rest. Uh, just some players to monitor for week 15. You got Precious Achua just to monitor with a Randall injury. I know he was in my list, but if you want to monitor him as well, maybe worth it. Gigi Jackson, like when he does get 20 minutes, seems to be half decent. So definitely monitor him. It's just that whether he's getting those minutes consistently is hard to say. Zach Collins, check for consistency. You know, we all know what he did at the start of the season. He's back now, but he's off that injury. So I think he's regaining his sort of strength and conditioning and stuff. But I think eventually when he becomes consistent, he's going to be good again. So you might want to pick him up a bit early. But again, that's very subjective, all these things. And who knows what goes on in San Antonio. I feel like they just try different rosters all the time, especially now that uh, All-Star break is over. They're going to really start just tr uh, throwing out all sorts of new rosters. And the Hornets roster as well. With all the depletion um, from injuries, as well as the fact that they traded Rogier, they're really, um, you know, light at the at the guard position. So, you know, Ish Smith, uh, Nick Jones, and whoever else they have playing, um, just monitor all their sort of minutes and what's consistent, and then you know, in terms of stats, what's what's consistent as well. And factors to consider when picking players for week uh, for each week, basically. Um, I always take advantage of low volume days. So this list is wrong. It's not OKC Portland Indiana. It's actually uh, the list in the top right corner of the screen um, that are highlighted in green. All those teams are playing um, uh, on the low volume days which is Tuesday and Thursday so try and pick up players from there because obviously they're likely to pay play because this week there's a lot of heavy days it's four so even if you pick up someone that's not playing on the light days and playing on the heavy you may not even be able to play them right so uh, that goes through dot point two as well uh, dot point three identify if any of your star players have two games that's not going to be applicable this week review if your opponents uh, stats to get a feel of where that what you want to target so just look through the last few weeks see what your opponent's sort of winning a lot by, losing a lot by, and then maybe you can devise a strategy on what you want to target for that week based off that. And then don't burn through your waiver picks too early. Just a common mistake that everyone makes and I sometimes make as well due to being impatient. But when you're in competitive leagues, sometimes you've got to, ju you got to jump on stuff. But it's always good to keep someone, especially if we're so close to trade deadline. Just remember that, you know, you want that extra pick in case something comes out Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon or something where a play has been traded and you know you can actually take advantage of a waiver wire pick when that happens as well. So that wraps up today's video. I really hope that they, I was able to give at least something that was valuable um, out of that because at the end of the day, there's just so much info out and there's just so many changes all the time that any any of this information can be valuable. But, but um, yeah, I guess I hope I, I was able to give you something and if I did, definitely give it a, the video a thumbs up. Otherwise, I'm back every week with a video like this as well as other videos that I do during the week. So if you like fantasy basketball, content that is short form around 10 minutes or under definitely feel free to subscribe um, because i'll be making videos that may be able to give you some insights for that uh, week and also be able to hopefully help you win the fantasy week but otherwise all the best uh, um, in terms of uh, luck for week 15 i hope you guys pull through and we are only a few weeks away from the playoff schedule as well starting so good luck with everything and i'll see you in the next video on the hoops lounge take it easy guys bye